हरि ओम स्टार्ट द प्रेयर ओम समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेव सुत देव कंसचानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु तमेव माता च पिताम तमेव बंधुष्य सखत्मे विद्याद्रविणमेव अमदेव देव तमेव सर्व गुरुदेव देव हरि ओम वे आर डूइंग सीरी सॉन् वाट इज अद्वैता सो लुकिंग एट द फंडमेंटल एस्पेक्ट एज वेल एज कवरिंग द बेसिक बेसिक दि कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अद्वैत वेदांत and we covered advaita means non dual na dvaita dvaita so it's there is no duality or duality is not a reality so what it implies is i am seeing duality perceptually i am seeing duality and experientially i am seeing duality but it's not really real it's only temporarily real but not absolutely real then what is absolutely real if something is temporarily real that means changing because the whole world is changing continuously what we saw thousands of years ago is different from what is right now and what will be a thousand years from now we don't know how it is going to be so someone ask uh, um, uh, einstein wow how do you think the the world war 3 is going to be how are they going to fight then he said i don't know about world war 3 but i can tell about world war 4 how can he tell about world war 4 because they will be fighting with the stones and sticks that's the world war 4 so what it implies the world war 3 will go to destroy everything nothing will be left for them other than stones and people still fight and therefore they have stones and st- sticks it's the mentality of the people to fight why we will see what advaita says also so advaita talks about the non duality in spite of duality that means <coughs> what i perceive what i experience is duality but the, that re, it's not really real it's only apparently real when something is apparently real there has to be something a substantive or aadhara that supports the the apparently real that should be real in the sense that just as there is a, uh, a things are flowing and continuously changing there has to be a river bed that stays constant on on which the river flows same way there has to be aadhara or adhisthanam I mean support on which things are changing. Things are changing. We call it, or Advaita calls it, adhyasa. That means superimposed things that keep changing. And the substantive or the adhisthanam is the adhara, and that is not going to change. So that's what essentially boils down to Advaita. The bottom line doesn't change, and only things that are changing. or the superficial things and which we call it it is a it's not really real and that's where the advaita vedanta zeros in so what is real and what is the truth and what is that i want to discover this all we discuss and truth is that which does not undergo any change so it has to be a changeless entity changeless with respect to the trikalam that means the the past present and future so that which does not undergo any modification in the past in the present in the future that alone is real and for that which fulfills the criteria because everything in the world is changing and you are changing everything is relative according to Einstein everything is relative only but when he said everything is real relative he didn't ask the question what is that on which these other things are relative things are are remaining relative or how things are changing because the if there has to be something changeless entity which is basis for which these things change 
and that's what essentially is advaita that is a non dual where you cannot negate anything and that's an absolute reality and that is the truth and the knowledge of the truth is the wisdom and that is what is required as we said because everybody is pursuing the for uh, goal the pursuit in happiness but what is happiness they are looking for but happiness is not outside it is from inside and happiness is defined as anantameva anandam infiniteness alone is happiness because there is no more longing for anything once you are full and that's how krishna also defines who is a wise person who is completely full at least who recognizes that i am full and therefore prajhati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan atman eva atman atushta is reveling in himself by himself got the self that he revels in is the full complete that means it is infinite and therefore there is no desire for anything else because there is no nothing else is there just as in the in the deep sleep state nakanjana kamam kamayata there is no desire for anything else because there is nothing you can see and that's essentially essentially what is the highest state of truth also and that is scriptures call it brahman brahman is the word is called brahad datu it is a brahad means it's a big so big is actually an adjective so it's a big mosquito big mountain and big country all this we use the big as an adjective to qualifying a noun but vedanta also says that the adjective also is getting qualified by the noun it qualifies so what does that mean if i say big mosquito you have some imagination of what is normal mosquito with which a big mosquito is is defined but when i say big mountain you have a different norm so mountain bigness is different from bigness of the mosquito so mountain bigness is a completely different level of scale because with reference to normal mountain you are calling it a big mountain just as with reference to normal size of the mosquito it is a big mosquito so big is also getting qualified by the noun suppose i have so big that unqualifiedly big unqualified means there is nothing to qualify and that is essentially the brahman where the the adjective itself is made into a noun it is so big it is the biggest and infiniteness only translation is it is infiniteness is brahman there is nothing other than itself and that is brahman so what is the brahman how do we know brahman further scripture becomes a pramana we'll see why scripture becomes a pramana later but scripture is a means of knowledge and scripture says that amavan pragnyanam brahma defines as though the definition is provided an operational definition is provided that pragnyanam brahma consciousness is infinite so implication is the consciousness there is a limit no limit and that is brahman so brahman has to be not an unconscious entity it is infinite but infinite conscious entity and that is for called gnanam also gnanam means pure knowledge so what is pure knowledge you know knowledge because if you go to the etymological word of the word knowledge they define they don't define what knowledge means they can only define knowledge with respect to knowledge of knowledge of chemistry knowledge of physics knowledge of biology so knowledge of something is always there but what exactly is pure knowledge you cannot define it and that's what essentially a brahman according to vedanta that is consciousness pure knowledge unqualified knowledge unqualified brahman and unqualified pure consciousness not conscious of it is pure consciousness therefore it is pragnanam brahma and that's one definition of brahman the second definition of brahman is is pure existence and that's how the the chandogya upanishad says sadeva saumya idamagram asi degameva advitiyam what was there before creation it was only homogeneous pure existence alone 
So you say consciousness alone. Well, consciousness has to exist, not non-existent consciousness. So consciousness, which is infinite, has to exist. So its existence also, from the point of existence, it's called Sat. From the point of consciousness, it's called Sit. Both are same. Because it's only infinite. Infinite, you cannot do any qualifications also. But from our point, it's being defined as it is Sat and Sit. Since it's infinite, it is limitless, therefore it is anandam also, happiness. So we have Brahman indicated by the scriptures as Sat, Sit, Ananda or Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam. So these are called indicatory because you cannot define infinite. Even the word infinite is only, it's not finite, that's all it means. Someone asked me, say, well, how, how, how do you know what is infinite? So how do you know if, if two parallel lines meet infinity, so how, how I want to check where they are going to meet in the infinity. So go to infinity. You can, wherever you go, it's finite only. So you cannot go. So obviously, it's a definition that they never meet in principle. So in the definition of any infinite, it's only a negation of finiteness is what is implied. And when you say Brahman is infinite, is anantam, that means nothing in the finite things can be Brahman. So it is one without a second. Why? Because if there is a second, then it's not infinite because one Brahman plus something else. So if something else is different from Brahman, then Brahman gets limited by something else. Therefore, Brahman cannot be infinite. So Brahman implies that there cannot be anything in that. And the scripture is in the Chandogya Upanishad, Sadvija, 6th chapter, Uddhalaka teaches his son Svetaketu. He says, Sadeva Samya Idamagramasi, existence alone was there before creation. And he says, Ekameva Advitiyam, it is one without a second. There the word Advitiyam, Advaita is pointed out, it is one without a second. So, he says, it alone exists, Sadeva, Sateva, existence alone was there because nothing else and that is one without a second and that statement implies that there is no Sajati, Vijati, Swagata, Vedas. That's what how Shankara provides a Ekam, Eva, Advitiyam. Ekam alone, Eva alone. So two words with the same meaning are used. So, and Advitiyam, one without a second, three words with the same implication is. So, scriptures when are repeating, then it repeats for different purpose and Sankara says, it is a Sajati, Vijati, Swagata, Bedham are not there. No discriminations or differentiations of Sajati Beda, Vijati Beda or Swagata Beda. So, three terms. Sajati Beda means of the same species, no distinctions like a Jati means like a chairs are one Jati, tables are another Jati, plants are one Jati, the insects are one Jati. So a group of, with a, with a common attributes, we call it a Jati. That's how the Nyaya also defines. And Nyaya means Indian logic. And the Jati, and it doesn't have, Sajati Beda means the internal differences within the jati. This is a small table, the big table, all are table jati only, but in that there are distinctions, small table, big table, uh, folding table, unfolding table, all these different varieties of tables are there, red table, blue table, all that. So varieties of varieties of tables are there, but they all belong to same table jati, but within the table jati, there are differences, they are called sajati beda. And so if there are more than one in that jati, then you can have Sajati Beda. And Vijati Beda is di different jatis also. That means tables are different from chairs, chairs are different from stools, stools are... So each one is jati, but each one is a particular attributes. So table attributes are different from chair attributes, different from stool attributes. And all stools have those attributes. All tables have the table attributes, but there is a difference between the the, the attributes of the of the of the tables are different from a 
the chairs and so on. So that's called Vijata Beda. Swagata Beda is even in the same table, you have a different parts are there, the legs may be different, the drawers may be different, the top may be different. So that's called internal differences in each Vyakti. Vyakti is individual one, Jati is collective one, and Vijati is different types of collections. So that's what. So even there is no Vijati Beda is there because there is one of a kind. There is no Sajati Beda, there is no, even within the Brahman, there is no different Brahmans. And there is no Swagata Beda, there are no internal differences of any kind. Why? Because it is infinite. If infinite cannot have parts, so you say if it's infinite, if they have parts, so all parts put together doesn't become infinite. Because part is limited, so limited plus limited plus limited cannot be infinite. That is a mathematically logical. So infinite can have internal differences. This is where Advaita comes into bit better because in the other philosophical traditions like Visishta Advaita and Dvaita, even though scripture says it is a, it's infinite, they says in the infinite there are differences and there is a Swagata Vedas. According to Ramanuja, there is no Vijati, Vijati Veda or Sajati Veda, but there are internal differences that are called Swagata Veda. And you see in the Virat Purusha, Lord Brahman, Lord in the Virat Purusha, in the total infinite, he has parts of every Jiva is a, Jiva is a part and the Jagat is a part of the Brahman. So there becomes a visation of, 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 the, of, the, of the Brahman. So that's why I call Visishta Advaita. It's only one, that's what Advaita, but internal parts are there which qualifies that. So that's called Visishana Sahita Brahman, therefore Visishta Advaita. So in that they accept Sagata Vedas. But from scientific point, it's not logical because infinite cannot have parts. Okay, let's accept that for the time being. And in the same scripture, the Chandogya Upanishad, Uddhalaka continues that existence alone was there. Then he says, Tada Ichata, it saw. Because it alone was there, it saw. What can it see? It is only infinite. So seeing involves, it is a conscious entity. So it's not only existent, but sat aspect, but it's also chit swarupam. So it is the nature of consciousness and which agrees with Pragnanam Brahma, consciousness infinite. And there are the, it saw, how can it see anything? There is nothing else to see. That means it becomes a self-conscious entity. I can see myself, how? Because when I'm conscious of myself, that's what it implies as when it say, Tadaikshata. Then what does, what does it do? When you say, hey, I'm only one. I want to become many. So, tadaichata bahusyam. Let me become many. I don't want to be just one. For, a, for fun, let me become into many parts. So, that's what the scripture says. Tadaichata bahusyam praja e eti. That's how he himself became many. So, that's how the creation is answered. And also, Brahman, which is infinite, which is of the nature of Satswarupam and Chitswarupam, which are same Satyaeva Chit, Chittayahyaham, Rana Maharshi says. And Sat is Chit and Chit is Sat. And that I am is also says in that, in that sloka, Satyaeva Chit, Chittayahyaham. And the, that Brahman is infinite, existent consciousness, and being infinite is also Ananda Swarupam. So, Satchidananda Brahman himself became many. That's how the creation accepted. Now, we asked a question Can infinite become many? In many, becoming many is a change of state from the, from the point of science. The one becoming into something else is what is called change of state. So a liquid changing into a gas, a liquid changing into a solid, that's a change of state. So a, 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 a position here is going to be, a, a box on the table is moved to, a, to the box on the chair. So there is a change of state because whether it's, a, it's on the table is moved to on the, on the chair or on the bed. So when there is a change of state, 
according to science also there has to be force behind it things don't change just like that so there has to be a driving force contributing to change of state from one to other so when they when there is a box on the table and it moves from one place to other place a change of state then there has to be movement and also there has to be force behind it i don't see any force i am only seeing the box moving from here to there the very fact that there is a change of state implies that there has to be force whether i see it or not so a change of state demands a force and the force i don't see it but i see from the effect i have to deduce that there is a force if the things are falling on the ground and fellow sitting there is a apples are falling from the tree to the floor there is a change of state there has to be a driving force for it to move down now it is not going up it's coming down only so that's why the 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 uh, newton says sitting there say why does the apple fall down he says he came up with the gravitational force that is pulling the apple down so because there is a change of state same way one but brahman which is infinite appears to become a many there has to be a change in state and the change in state is requires a force and the force is called maya so now we are introducing brahman and maya maya is a force for a fundamental force that contributes the one becoming into many into the universe that becoming many in the universe that whatever is the universe is part of becoming only so if i look at universe all forces are there so by einstein is discovering some forces and the newton started gravitational force and there is a electromagnetic force and all sorts of forces have been being discovered they are discovering they are there in the in the universe operating and uh, contributing to the to the movement or changes in the state and uh, einstein was looking for what is the force of all forces a fundamental force and that's called universal force and he was looking for universal force and could not find it and vedanta says that is a maya because it's a maya maya is a universal force making the whole universe from one to becoming many with varieties and varieties of many things all forces in that all other things all coming from single one more transforming into many and that transformation is called maya and all other expressions of maya and you, the brahman as though appear to become many and now we come into the conclusion number 1 brahman is infinite and if he is saying creation is coming brahman cannot undergo creation or cannot become many because it's infinite infinite cannot undergo modification only finite things can undergo modifications and therefore brahman in principle cannot become many at the same time since we are seeing brahman many and pointing out that the absolute truth is brahman which cannot undergo change so we are seeing have a two problem one is brahman there is no creation from the brahman point at the same time we are seeing creation and therefore advaita zero sin from the point from the brahman point there is no creation from the point of the jiva who is an individual who looks at the universe things there are different so so many things are there it has to come from scriptures is it has to come from one therefore <coughs> there is a creation so creation is invoked from the infinite to finite things around and this space time everything else is part of the creation and therefore there is a force that is contributing to the creation force is maya shakti and the creation is should not be there because from brahman there is no there is no creation and from one brahman point there is no creation also it is ekameva advitiyam at the same time we are seeing creation so we are now differentiating the truth one is absolute truth called paramarthika satyam and another is called 
transactional truth. Transaction means appears to be there and continue to transaction, but it's not really real, but only apparently real. The apparently real is real enough during transactions, but it is not really real from the point of absolute. Now this is the, the problem of Advaita Vedanta. It's not a problem. It is the explanation of Advaita Vedanta where Dvaita comes into picture, but Dvaita that comes because of the creation and therefore the whole universe is only Dvaita only, but from the point of absolute, Dvaita is continuously changing and there has to be substantive or sub substratum on which the changes can occur. That substratum cannot change. If substratum also can change, then there has to be another substratum on which the changes occur and that's what we define Brahman. So ultimately, there has to be an absolute on which no changes can occur. That's why Advaita is much more scientific compared to all other philosophical interpretations. Because even in, in the Vedantic tradition, there are other interpretations like Dvaita, Visistha Advaita, Advaita Advaita, all other uh, arguments are there. But if this is not fundamentally scientific or rationally correct, then we have to reject it. They may be temporarily satisfying, but if you want to know the truth, Advaita alone becomes the truth from the point of the logic as well as from the point of the scriptural statement also. So here we are coming to in a way two levels of at least two levels of reality. One is absolute reality where it is one without a second pure existent consciousness. No words can reach there because words means a differentiation of something something else. Because somebody has to make a sound loud. There is nothing of that type and there is no nowhere known reality. There is no experience or experience duality and it is a homogeneous pure existent consciousness which is infiniteness. Therefore it is Satyam, Yanam, Anantam, Brahma. So that's how scripture starts definition of Brahman. It is a pointing, it is not unreal, it is Satyam, it's real and real is what? Which does not undergo any change. That alone is real. So even creation involves change. So it cannot have, there cannot be any creation from the Paramarthika point. Paramarthika means supreme reality and the, the, any changes that occurs are only at a relative level and that is called it Vyavaharika Satyam transactional reality. So at least now we have defined two, re two real, real situations. One is absolutely real, another is not really real, one can say, and it is transactionally real. So these are two levels of reality. And if you go further, there is a further distinction in terms of Pratibhasika. So we have Paramarthika and we have Vyavaharika. Now what is Pratibhasika? Pratibhasika is at individual level at each jiva. He is creating his own world. And that polarity that he creates is, is, a, is a projection from his mind, not from the total mind of the Ishwara. So he is like Ishwara also creating. And from his preference, then there is a creation. And what happens when, how does that happen? Simple answer is when you go to a dream state and you are lying in a beautiful soft bed in an AC room and all the lights are out and you are sleeping there and then you are dreaming when you dream as a dream world now. So there you may create a whole forest and and uh, animals and people and everything else. There are rivers and valleys and trees and mosquitoes. Everything is there you can find in the dream world. Are they real or not? So who, are, who has to answer the question? From the point of a waker, it's only a dream. He will get up in the morning and say, oh, I had a bad dream or a good dream and something. Oh, what happened? I was a millionaire there. Hey, let's go and let's go to the bank and change that. Uh, no, that is only in the dream bank. He has a dream million dollars. In the waking state, he is still a pauper, pauper there. So, the, uh, there is a story of Janaka Maharaj and 
he was a great king and when he went to sleep he slept he dreamt as though he was a beggar and starving many days and longing for food and out of pain of the pain hunger pain he was so so this one that woke him up and now he is back as a king emperor there is a lot of food there on the table and all that so he rushed to his teacher i don't know which is real now is a is a dream i was a, a pauper and a beggar is that real am i getting up into a waking this state of king i am dreaming as i am king or i am dreaming as a beggar which is real for me which is really real and the astavakra the teacher says neither one is real it's only one is vyavaharika satyam transactionally real another is called pratibhasika satyam and we'll go more into details because this is a part of the advaita vedanta where you have a, a, a paramartika satyam you have a vyavaharika satyam and you can have third is a pratibhasika satyam where created by individual mind and that we will examine more after we come back with this we stop here Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Asishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om